Welcome back to the homestead and welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to be refurbishing some old wooden handled garden tools that were left for us. They've seen better days and they need some care. So stay with us and see how we do it. So I prefer wooden handled tools over steel or fiberglass. It just uh, feels better in the hand for me. But there are some things about wooden handled tools that are a challenge. One is rot. If you don't take care of them, if you leave them outside for an extended period of time, they can decay and obviously break. But if you take care of them, they will last you a very long time. Now, these tools here were left for me by the previous homeowner. He said I could have anything that was left here and we have a bunch of wooden handle tools. Unfortunately, they were not taken care of. So we are gonna refurbish these today because I do use them, but it's time to give them some care. So let me show you what we're gonna do. First, we wanna take down any of the decayed wood or pitted cracked wood on the exterior of the handle. Now this one is the worst, this uh, flat head shovel right here. And we're gonna work that with a spoke shave. If you don't have one of these, it's great to have around the shop. This is a Stanley number 151 spoke shave, and it is a great tool to have. After we spoke shave these and get all the deep uh, cracked exterior of the wood off, because the interior of these uh, handles is still perfectly fine, they're not rotted through at all, then we're gonna take some uh, sandpaper, smooth them out, and finally treat them with a boiled linseed oil, which is going to protect them. Let's work on our rake today for the video. We have our set in our wood vise. You can set them in your multi-purpose vise or your metalworking vise, but you want to make sure that you have some soft jaws on there so it doesn't mar the handle really, really badly. We have our spoke shave, our Stanley 151 here, and we've got it set very shallow just to take off the top. Now we can continue to move it down, but we want that shallow set on it to just start to take off that dried decayed wood on the outside and the remainder of that varnish that is on this handle. Make sure you're continuously working around the curve of the handle and not staying in one spot, spot, so you do not flat spot your handle. Once you're satisfied that you've taken off all the varnish and decayed wood from your handle with your spoke shave and that you have a nice roundness to the handle, you want to take your sandpaper and complete the job. Now, I like a 220 grit. This spoke shave does a really great job with uh, getting the grain really smooth and fine, but you still need to sand it. You see, need to sand down just those tiny, tiny little ridges that are left from spoke shaving. I like to just drape it over the handle here, use both hands to pull down and come around the handle. Once we finished the handle and we were satisfied with its condition, the smoothness of it and the feel of it, we went ahead and wire brushed the rake end here, gave it a good sand and spray painted it. We felt that that was actually the better way to go to protect it from the elements. Now, the next thing and last thing we need to do is protect our handle. And for that, we're gonna use our boiled linseed oil. To apply that boiled linseed oil, all I like to do is take a rubber glove, get a little bit in my hand, and we're gonna rub it in to our handle here. That gives us the easiest method of really smashing it down into all that grain there, rubbing it in. It's the best method we've found to really get all those cracks and crevices. Now 
Now that we've applied our first coat of boiled linseed oil, we're going to let it cure for a few days. Then we are going to apply another coat. We usually like to do two, but one is fine. It's always important to remember to take care of your tools and not leave them out in the weather, especially these wooden tool handles, or they will get seriously damaged in just a short amount of time. Go check out our other video on how to build a small garden shed that'll protect you if protect your tools if your barn or shop like this is far away from your garden and you don't want to lug tools back and forth. We're going to get started on these other two, but first we want to say thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed the video, we want you to comment in the comment section below and give us a thumbs up on the video. A like helps us out a lot and a share on social media also helps us out. We appreciate it and we want you to go also check out our blog on our website countrylivingexperience.com over there we've also got our tool store where we've got a ton of different tools we use here on the homestead that we recommend and we love and we think are great so go check that out thank you for being here have a great day and we'll see you on the next video